Hi everyone, I'm going to make another short video here just to show you how I did the scales and the texturing and painting on the Tuatara which a few of you have been asking about. So I've just gone back to a previous save of it before I'd coloured it in. I've done most of the texture work and the scales and that so I've just deleted a few in the eyes on this side just so we can give you a demonstration of what of some of the techniques I've learned and how to make it look semi a bit more lifelike. Probably the biggest thing for making something come alive is getting the eyes right. So I'll just go to the eye layer, which I've got as a separate layer, and I'll just turn on mirror. We'll do both eyes at the same time because I've got a, so I've done most of it with mirror mode, so you don't have to do or it cuts down on half the amount of work. And later on, you can do how I've showed you in other videos. You can cut and paste it and stamp it and change its shape round. But for a start, we'll just get the eye done. Something like that. And probably the best bit of advice I could give you for um, trying to make things look lifelike is just know your subject well. Like look at lots of photos. Like look look at sort of as many close in shots of eyes and things as you can see because that's the eyes are pretty important if you want to make it look like it's come to life. So I've, I've your eye caught off to use a sort of a brown and blend mode just to do some of the shape of the, the colouring in the eye and then maybe a light one just around the where it's a bit more highlighted and I'll go back to the black and do its do its pupil and then normally just a bit of a white for the reflections on the top of its eye and see so when you look out now it suddenly doesn't look like a lifeless model it suddenly looks like he's sitting there sort of looking at me and that's just getting the right. You just got to play around with it. Come up with something that sort of looks. You'll soon know when you you can tell if you've got it looking pretty close. So we'll just flip back to the the body now, and we'll show you how we do some of the scaling. And again, it's just getting familiar with what whatever you're trying to sculpt. It's just. Yeah. Like I said before, just look at lots of photos. It's the easiest way to get familiar with it, and then you soon sort of know what you, what effects you're trying to achieve, and and what it looks like. So you'll know if you're not quite on the right track. And I'm constantly here. I'm just scaling this ear tool up and down, just to get different sort of size scales and bumps, or move it around for different shape ones. Obviously, didn't um, video the whole thing because it would have been a pretty boring video because it took about four and a half hours, I think, to make the to Tuatara total time. So I'll just do this little bit of the face just so you sort of can see the idea of how colouring and texturing can make something sort of almost come to life a little bit. There's a lot of placing spheres for this, but can be quite tedious. But that's um, it's all worth it at the end if you get it if you get the result that you're sort of after. Now normally this would have been done in mirror mode so I wouldn't have to do the other side but I've already done that side because I'm just doing this as a demonstration so this side will be different to the other side but that probably even makes it more lifelike that it's not completely identical because some other things can look a bit too mirrored it can take away a little bit of that life that um, lifelike look to them in reality a lot of things are not quite a hundred percent perfect there's little like um, defects here and there or it's not quite straight here and that's just just how nature sort of is I 
obviously you don't have to cover the whole thing with it well for this particular lizard anyway I can just just do enough that you can give it a textured look without going overboard and blowing the file size out the window because if you've got too many tile, um, scales all over it at the moment we're still we're at 14 megabytes which is which is starting to get up there but uh, there is a lot of small spheres on this so it's sort of understandable I think it's just you yeah, constantly change your angle and that just so that they're not all looking like a tiled effect. I used to use a sort of a lot of copy paste for doing this sort of thing, but then you you do well it is a way of doing it, but you do end up with a little bit more of a replicated look without and it doesn't look quite as natural as if you physically hand place each each one. And some of them, if I've gone a little bit, I haven't, my hand's been a bit shaky and I've got it, some of the spheres are probably out a little bit far. Just get the uh, smooth brush, just give it a light smooth just to sit them back into the body a little bit. You don't have to go overboard with it, but just enough so that it just sort of masks it a little bit. Right, now we'll get on to the painting part of it. So first I'll try and find, oh you look at obviously your yeah, pictures again to try and work out what colours you need. I just got to try and get the right green here. Oh, probably do for that one. Get a slightly lighter green. So I usually start with the lighter colours first. And end up with the dark ones and then do the standout highlight features later on so i'll just do some light green over it i'm just going to do it here i'm not going to paint the whole body just for the this demo video and let's see how we're on a different layer so we're not affecting the eye in any way at all and i'm on i, I mostly use the cone paintbrush that's just my preference because you can go like sort of thicker coloured in one area where you can bring it right out so you got a very fine point if you're trying to miss say I'm not trying to get too much in the mouth there it doesn't have to be perfect it's just get get some colour in there to start with and then you can start layering it in after so now I'll get some darker stuff just we'll darken the top of his head up a little bit Gonna, probably going to be a little come out a little bit different to my original one but that's all that's all right we end up with a similar sort of effect I'll just put some black um, half opacity paint in underneath where it sort of looks like it's highlighted and we'll get in the, his nostril see just darken that up a little bit and then like all underneath these little ridges and scaled um, bony pieces on his skeleton and around the eye socket Probably need to get some in here in the mouth to make it just darken it up a bit. Now we just go back to a, a lighter one here, just because oh, we might find an even lighter one than that. Just need a slightly different colour because they're not all green on the top. So just do some. Quite often lizards and things are a lighter colour underneath. Yeah, we'll just give it a 
light brush with um, some brown. A bit more of a sandy colour, I think. Yeah, that's more what I'm after. Yeah, that one just still had a little bit much green in it. It's just a lot of experimentation until you, if you're looking at a lot of photos all the time of your animal, you get you get the idea of what colouring you, you sort of want and you'll end up just keep on experimenting until something looks a bit more resembling of what you originally were tent trying to get out of it. And now, still not quite looking really lifelike because a lot of the, well, but these particular lizards, the scales are slightly different colour. So now just, just start colouring just the odd scale here and there, and that suddenly starts making them stand out and looking a little bit just more textured because it sort of highlights different scales. You don't have to stick to one colour, you can mix and match it. At the end of the day, it's whatever you're trying to do. It's just trying to get it looking as close to what you think it's going to look like or what the end result is you want. So it's you. It's this is where the time comes in, um, where it takes a lot of time just painting everything to make it look right. But I'm pretty sure, as you'll agree, it's you get to end up with a a good result at the end. Just zoom out a bit, and you can already see it starting to just suddenly look totally different with some of the scales and that now coloured in. Just get some grey here just to highlight some of these shadow and a little bit in between it, just because it's a little bit too green, I think. To the, to the lizard's lips. So these particular ones, I got a, some of the, some of them have quite a almost fluorescent blue sort of glow on their lips. And then just to make it look like it's a little bit of the colours bleeding downwards. And there you go, that's pretty much a very quick demonstration of how I was able to get the, the colour and the scales onto the tuatara. I hope you enjoyed that.